Well, we are so pleased that you're here in Kansas City, Jackie, and I just wanted to spend a few moments asking you a few questions to help, uh, hopefully help navigate some of the guys, that'll be guys and girls that will be watching this. And so I want to take you back to 1966 and you're feeling the call of God upon your life and... No, not a call, it was a push. A push. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, you, you, you talked with the vicar, and he was like, almost like, get on a boat and and and, and go go into the mission field. And so and so, you're feeling that. I want to know. So you, obviously you did, it and you've had an amazing. Um, you've told me not to use years, but but 50 plus years in in Hong Kong, amazing ministry. But that that initial tug or pull or push to, to go out onto the mission field, I would imagine a lot of your friends and family, that would have created lots of different reactions. Did it? And was everybody, yes, go for it, Jackie, or was there a lot of different mixed emotions? And how did you navigate that? Actually, it was very easy. Um, I, the whole thing was very easy. Okay. I mean, one, one, once, once it was clear that I should go, because God had spoken to me through a dream, through a vision, through a message in tongues. Um, and then I went to see the vicar and he said, why don't you get on a boat and pray to know where to get off? Um, and I thought, oh, that sounds very exciting, um, but it must be wrong because I know missionaries have to suffer and that sounds fun. So, um, but he said, no, it's quite biblical because that's what Abraham did, because he didn't know where he was going. So uh, I went to tell my parents, and I told them one by one, and they weren't Christians, which really helped. Oh, how so? Well, you see, if, if, if your parents are Christians um, and they disapprove, um, a, a, then, then you've got to, what are you battling? You know, with my parents, um, my mother said, well, I agree, but daddy won't. And I spoke to daddy and he said, well, I agree, but mummy won't. And then I heard them um, persuading one another. So this was the grace of God, because ha had that not happened, I couldn't have gone, because it, it, it was okay for me, you know, I mean, I knew God would look after me, but they didn't. So that would have been at their expense and I wouldn't have done that. So it was the grace of God. They just, you know, my father wasn't a Christian and he said, um, well, uh, once I got to France, which was where I picked the boat up from, he said, um, well, I may not believe, but I trust in your belief. I thought that was pretty good. Um, and he did actually come come to Christ before he died. So that was that was wonderful. Wow. So what, one of the things that you said about that trip was um, you, you've said you, you you called up the mission organizations and they were like, well, you've got to be 25. But you, you'd felt, well, Jesus is returning soon. So I wanted to ask this question, one about that instance, but then over over your life, how has the, re the return of Jesus been a, been a, had an effect on your ministry? Um, I, I think it has to be the same for everyone. If, if you live in the light of eternity, then today is not difficult, uh, whatever today is, because you, you, you're graced for today. And it, it means how you spend your money you know, you don't have to have a large amount in the bank because if he's coming back next week, he'll feel stupid. So, uh, so you might as well spend it on the poor. Uh, that's it, really. So I'm always thinking um, when he comes back, I'm not afraid of um, seeing him as far as my eternal future is concerned, but I I've always wanted to answer well for uh, how I use my time um, 
and how I used his heart, because that's the talent. Mm -hmm. He gave me the best talent was his heart. Mm -hmm. So you better spend it. The Holy Spirit, I think one, one preacher called the Holy Spirit the forgotten God. Um, in terms of, in the Trinity, it's often the most downplayed part of the Trinity. And yet, in your ministry, the Holy Spirit's had a very, very visible role, which I think all Christians need. But uh, can you explain that a little bit in terms of your ministry to drug addicts and then even in your personal life, how the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the daily infilling, speaking in tongues, all of those things have, have had a an impact on your ministry? Well, I was at boarding school and I got confirmed, if you know what that is. Um, and at, when I was 13 or 14, um, that, that was, that's an Anglican thing. And so I was very serious about God. I just didn't like him, you know, but anyway, I thought it would help to get done. And so I said to the vicar um, before the the, the confirmation, what am I supposed to do when the bishop puts his hands on my head? And the vicar didn't know, what, so he just said, <coughs> pray. So m me and my twin, we went forward in our white dresses and um, the vic bishop put his hands on our heads and I went back to my place um, and I had this terrible desire to laugh. And I thought I was going to explode all over the pew. And, and, I, and I, this was terribly improper, you see, because I knew you could laugh at tea, which came afterwards, but not in the middle of a confirmation service. So I put my hymn sheet over my mouth so nobody would see. But that was actually a, a foretaste, because that's when the Holy Spirit's supposed to come. That was a foretaste of what um, was going to happen years later. My search for the Holy Spirit was really um, very practical. It was, um, dear God, there's th these people down here who are going to die, um, probably within a year, uh, if you don't break through. Uh, on one hand, I don't mind if I never see anything because I, I know you'll do something because you said you would. On the other hand, these people are going to die. So I need whatever you've got going to make you real. And that's, that's really why I started to pray for the Holy Spirit. It was whatever you have that will make, help to make you real. Um, because when I spoke to people about Jesus, it was just just words they didn't understand at all. Especially my evangelism methods were very Western, and Western goes through the mind. It, 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 it's a stupid approach when you're in the middle of a spiritual people, which the Chinese are. They all believe in demons. But if you're going through the ABC of the gospel, it's wasted mm -hmm. on them. So it didn't work, and I, so I, prayed and prayed and prayed and um, finally met this couple who prayed for me. They put their hands on my head and it wasn't nearly as nice as when the bishop had. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't feel like laughing at all. I just, after half an hour of intense embarrassment, um, I spoke in a new language and couldn't wait to get out. Um, my feeling was so glad this was Chinese. I couldn't have done it with the Brits. And, and so I went to the door as quickly as I could and they said, um, oh, by the way, you can expect all the other gifts as well. And I said, oh, thank you so much and, and left as quickly as I could. And n no, no emotion except embarrassment. So I didn't go on praying in tongues. And it wasn't until a year later I met some people who persuaded me that the Bible said, um, you'll be edified if you use this gift. So I did. Um, I still didn't feel anything. Um, I, I mean, the experience didn't do anything for me. Um, but 
about six weeks later when I when gangsters started falling down in the streets and believing in Jesus and I talked to people and they believed. Then I then I was very emotional. And then sometime later made the discovery that when the Holy Spirit came upon one uh, uh, gang leader um, and he spoke in tongues for half an hour and came off opium um, just by speaking in tongues. I thought that was, you know, good. Now I can just go into all the drug dens and lay hands on people and that's the job. Of course it wasn't, but that's what I thought. Um, it was, in fact, just the beginning of a new life, um, but a wonderful beginning. Thank you so much for being with, with us today, Jackie. That's so helpful. And um, we, we have a fairly wide um, web audience. I don't know, like, if there's, if there's anybody that feel a, a calling to the missions field. I mean, do you, have you got any words for, for, for anybody out there that you would be like, other than go? <laughs> Stay. Stay. <laughs> so many people think two weeks is it. And you know what the poor people need. They need, they need the Lord, they need a family, and they need someone who will stay. They, they, they really need, you know, I'm the only constant person that most of our people have in their whole lives. They've had bad families. They've They've had bad experiences, the kids have been beaten, the women have been sold, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't impress them when missionaries come and take their photos and get on the next plane. Just stay. Mm 